Welcome to lecture 21 of Corporate Finance. We are going to continue our discussion on the topic of dividend theories. So in previous lecture, we explored uh, uh, different theories. Uh, two of them were uh, informational content and or signaling theory. Uh, these were not discussed in previous lecture. So we are going to explore these theories. Then we are going to explore the clientele effect theory. Uh, what do you mean by stock repurchase? And what is stock dividend and stock split? How they are different from cash dividend? And what are their effects on the balance sheet of the firm? Okay, so starting with the theory uh, of uh, 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 dividend theory. Uh, this theory is called informational content of dividend or the signaling theory, right? And it is called signaling theory for a reason and uh, we would just explore this reason uh, in a while. But before that, let's see what information uh, asymmetry is. By information asymmetry, we mean that two parties involved in an economic transaction do not have uh, same information. For example, you you getting your car repaired from uh, a, a mechanic. Um, so mechanic would have obviously more information uh, regarding the uh, regarding the car as compared to you. Similarly, if you are selling your car to another person, then uh, the seller who who is the owner of the car knows his car better than the, the buyer. So, so the information is not same uh, with both the parties involved in the transaction. This concept is called information asymmetry. So what this have to do with dividend uh, theories? When we say that, uh, that if, if, if a, a company is increasing dividend, what this means is that we know or we assume that the managers of the firm do have more information as compared to the shareholder. So if they have more information, what, what we just said, there is an information asymmetry between the managers and the shareholders. So we know managers do have more information. So if they are increasing the dividend, then this is giving a signal to the market, to the shareholders or to the investors that this company do have a stable cash inflow or it expects in future that they would be able to maintain this increase in dividend. No firm would increase the dividend if they know that they cannot maintain the that increase in dividend. Right? So, so that's why it is called signaling theory because it uh, it gives a signal to the market regarding the future prospects of the company. So empirical evidence shows that the stock price rises when the dividend is unexpectedly increased and fall when the dividend is unexpectedly decreased. The reason is that increase in dividend is giving a signal in the market that the company is strong and it is stable and it expects to to be able to pay the increased dividend in future. And if the dividend is decreasing, then its price would decrease because this decrease in dividend is giving an, a signal to the market that the company cannot maintain its current level of dividend. That's why it is decreasing it. So a dividend cut is often a signal that the firm is in trouble. That is the decrease in dividend suggests that the firm is in trouble and the stock prices decline because of the future dividend are expected to be lower. If you remember in stock valuation, we discussed that price of or intrinsic value of a stock is equal to uh, all the future dividends discounted to the present value. And if we decrease the value of future dividend, if we decrease the future dividend, right? then that means the intrinsic value of that firm would decrease and hence uh, its market value would also be affected. Because if the intrinsic value decreases, 
then obviously investors would not purchase or, or the rational investor would not purchase it at a higher market value right its market value would also decrease okay this brings us to uh, the next theory which is the clientele effect what this theory suggests is that there are certain groups of investors who demand low dividend they prefer low dividend and there is other group of uh, uh, investors who demand high dividend so a company paying higher dividend is catering to the need of its clientele right so firm attracts a particular group based on the dividend yield right so uh, what this means is that the higher dividend or lower dividend does not have to do with the firm value but uh this is simply have to do with the clients that uh, or the shareholder that holds the uh, larger amount or larger percentage of the company's share if for example there is abc corporation and the abc's corporation's shares majority parts of its shares uh, is held by an insurance company insurance companies do prefer higher dividends or pension fund they do prefer higher dividend because they need cash flow to be dispersed among their pensioners so essentially this pension fund is the client of this abc corporation and what this theory suggest is that this abc corporation is paying higher dividend not because of its future prospects but because of its clientele because its clientele demands a higher dividend okay so what is stock repurchase what happens is that when a firms want to increase their uh, say they they want to have an expansion or they want to pay their debt what the firm do is uh so for example it is not listed in uh, in a stock exchange what they would do is they would have an ipo initial public offering they would uh, sell their shares to general public that's why it is called initial public offering and the public would after buying the share obviously they would uh, they would pay some amount and that amount would be used for expansion purposes so this is the selling of shares right but stock repurchase is that when this firm this abc corporation rebuys the share from the public that it had sold in previously in the ipo so to purchase the purchase by a corporation of its own shares remember this is important term the shares should be the firm's own share so if abc corporation issued certain shares to general public then it would only be called stock repurchase if this abc corporation is buying back it is also a buyback if this abc corporation is buying back its own share from the general uh, public or from the open market uh if it is buying the share of other firm that then it is not stock repurchase then it is simply an investment it either would be categorized as uh, marketable securities right so if there uh, are no imperfections a cash dividend and share repurchase are essentially the same what this means is that if the firm is buying back its shares then previously if the the share price was 10 rupees per share and firm bought back 50% of its shares then the the supply of shares in the market had decreased and its price would uh, would increase now uh, the price would be 20 rupees uh, per share so although the firm had not paid cash dividend to its shareholders but because of this increase this capital gain in the share value we can essentially say that uh, that the shareholders worth have increased so what the shareholder can do if they want cash they can essentially sell, uh, sell uh, some part of uh, their holdings 
so uh, and by no imperfections we mean that if there is there are no taxes right and other uh, market imperfections then uh, whether there is cash dividend or share repurchase it wouldn't affect the shareholders the effect on the shareholder would be same in either case okay and why we are comparing these for example a firm have a cash of 3 lakh rupees you can either give a cash dividend or it can repurchase its shares if it gives cash dividend to its current shareholders then say for example if there are 1 lakh shareholders then each would get uh 3 rupees right of cash dividend but if instead of giving a cash dividend if the firm repurchases its shares then it would be able to at its current price is 10 rupees then it would be able to repurchase are uh, 30000 shares right for 3 lakh rupees and and the firm would then be left with uh, 70000 shares so if previously there were 1 lakh shares and each share price was 10 rupees so then that means market capitalization of this firm was 1 million but now if the number of shares have decreased to 70 thousand then the new value of share would be equal to 1 million divided by uh, 70000 so in uh, obviously that would be greater than uh, 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 the 10 rupee mark so it would increase the price to uh, almost 14 rupees so instead of giving the cash dividend to the shareholder the uh, the increase in the value of the share would also uh, have the same effect for the shareholders okay then we have types of stock repurchase we the firm can repurchase the so how the firm would repurchase its shares it can either repurchase the share from the open market when the firm wants to repurchase the share from the open market the company would simply purchase its own stock uh, just as any other shareholders uh, from the open market they would just log into their uh, their trading terminal and buy back the shares right the second way uh, so 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 in this way the firm would not reveal itself as a buyer because in the open market we do not know who is buying the shares from us the second way is through tender offer uh, and the company would announce to buy a fixed number of shares at a specific price so what the this abc corporation would do is that it would uh, announce a tender that it wants to buy a certain number of shares of its own stock right and it it, it would invite uh, the general public uh, to sell the their holdings to the abc corporation and the last one we have a targeted repurchase and in targeted repurchase the repurchase of the share would be from a specific individual or institution so for example if there is an institution xyz that have a quite large holding of this abc corporations shares then rather than abc corporation buying its share from the open market what they can do is that they can uh <coughs> they can approach xyz corporation and buy back their shares from xyz okay so uh, what Uh, are the difference between cash dividend and repurchase and i mean uh, what advantage do cash repurchase have over cash dividend the repurchase have a significant tax advantage over cash dividend the reason is that when a company issues cash dividend as soon as the cash dividend is issued the tax is deducted it's ad source deduction 
so uh, so the investors would get the amount after deduction of taxes but in ca- case of repurchase the shareholders can sell back the shares and they would not have to pay dividend or they would not have to pay cash on dividend but rather they would have to pay capital gain tax and that one thing that capital gain tax is not at source deduction it is paid at the end of the year that yeah. so it gives you extra liquidity and the second advantage is that this uh, this capital gain tax is only paid on the extra amount that you have earned so for example if you bought a share at 100 rupees and you sold it back to the firm at 120 so the increase in price was just 20 and you would just be taxed for this amount not the whole amount of 120 rupees okay so dividends are tax mandatory but repurchase is only tax if shareholders sell the share in profit so this is one of uh, another exa- advantage of repurchase it's also related to tax is that the tax on dividend is mandatory it would be deducted at source but in case of repurchase the tax would only be deducted if if the shareholder is in profit and he chooses to sell the shares okay so this brings us to stock dividend we did discuss some part of uh, introductory part of this concept stock dividend in our previous lecture but we didn't went through the accounting treatment of uh, stock dividend so what stock dividend is that a payment to shareholders in the form of stock so for example if i hold a 1000 shares of angro corporation right these are the number of shares so rather than angro corporation paying me cash dividend what angro corporation do is that they pay me stock dividend say for example angro corporation in pakistan by the way it is also called bonus so uh, if the angro corporation say for example pays 20 percent stock dividend then that would mean is that if i have 1000 shares currently i'm holding 1000 shares then after this stock dividend i would have 20 percent more as compared to this previous holding so then i would have 1200 shares sorry 1200 shares so uh, if i wanted cash so what i can do is i can sell this 200 shares back in the open market and i can have cash and still then i would have my initial holding so for shareholders it doesn't uh, affect their worth but what it does is is it dilutes the value of each shares outstanding so obviously if previously there were 1000 shares in the market and now the number of shares have increased in the market then each share value would decrease each share price would decrease if currently previous the share value uh, uh, each share was worth 300 rupees then after this 20 percent stock dividend each share might be worth uh, sorry 250 rupees so so uh, it dilutes the value of each share uh, in the market so it's commonly expressed in terms of percentages i just uh, quoted this example of 20 percent stock dividend so there is an example a peterson corporation has 10000 shares of stock outstanding each stock is selling at rupees 66 per share with 10 percent stock dividend so before the stock dividend the company's balance sheet might look like falling so before we move forward let's discuss this example there is a par value right what this par value means is normally in pakistan a share would have a par value of 10 rupees that means that this piece of shares its face value the, the value written on on the share would be 10 rupees but certain corporation either sell them at premium or discount 
by discount we mean they would sell this 10 uh, rupees share its face value being 10 rupees at say for example 7 lesser than its face value so um, so selling price is lesser than face value would be called discount if selling price is higher than face value then it would be called premium so recently uh, aga corporation it's a steel manufacturing uh, firm uh, in karachi it uh, it went through ipo right and although the shares face value each shares face value was 10 rupees but the share was sold to general public at 32 rupees so that means that there is a 22 rupees of premium this premium depends on the worth of a corporation if a corporation have good worth people would, would want to or investor would want to buy this share even at a higher price okay so if this corporation sold its share at 32 rupees how would it uh, report this amount in its balance sheet so in balance sheet under the owner equity section what it would do is it would write common stock right uh, at rupees 10 sorry and say for example they issued 10,000 shares to make it simple share is outstanding so they would have uh, this amount being reported in equity but obviously they didn't receive 1 lakh rupees by issuing these shares these 10,000 shares when they issued these 10,000 shares they sold each share at 32 rupees so essentially they raised uh, 3 lakh 20,000 rupees right but 1 lakh rupees would be written as common stock under the face value the extra amount which is raised as an excess capital would be written as capital in excess of par value so um, 320 minus 1 lakh rupees that would be 220 so we know that the firm raised total of 3 lakh 20 thousand rupees so uh, the the amount from the par value would be written separately as opposed to the premium so similarly is the case in uh, in this example the firm had 10,000 shares and its par value was one dollar so um, the amount written under the common stock at par value would be 10,000 rupees dollars and the excess amount to par value would be uh, 2 lakh right we, we do not have that specific data the retained earning was this and the total owner's equity was 5 lakh rupees this is the previous uh, balance sheet the, the balance sheet of say for example previous year and not of uh, this specific year so in this specific year the uh, the firm issued 10 percent stock dividend its current price is 66 so the new balance sheet would look like this so previously firm had 10,000 shares and it issued 1,000 extra share right it would issue 10% of uh, stock dividend so 10% of stock dividend means that so now it would have 11,000 shares outstanding right so uh, plus 1000 1000 is additional so there are 11000 shares outstanding each having power value of 1000 1 dollar we would have 11000 in common stock and the capital in excess of power value would be uh, 65 right into 1000 why 65 because in previous example we in previous slide we saw that the share value was 66 but because one is its par value then excess amount is how much 65 so the excess capital in addition to par value is 65 and because it issued 1000 additional shares we need to add that excess value in our balance sheet so that would be 
65,000. So previously, the excess amount was recorded as 2 lakh rupees. Now we would have to add this additional 65,000 rupees and we would have 2 lakh 65,000 rupees. Uh, the owner equity would not change. So if we previously had 5 lakh uh, dollars minus 2 lakh 65,000 minus 11,000 and that would give us a retained earning. So our retained earning would decrease as opposed to the previous year. So previously we had 2,90,000. Now they would decrease by 66,000 because we have issued 1,000 shares for 66 rupees, right? So now its value would decrease by 66,000. That is 290. Uh, minus 66 that would give us 2,40,000. So you can either calculate it this way or you can reverse engineer it using this uh, this equation. Okay. So what is stock split? Uh, it is similar to stock dividend. Uh, an increase in firm's share outstanding without any change in owner equity. Uh, Essentially, in previous example, we saw that owner equity remained 5 lakh irrespective whether the firm issued stock dividend or not. But in case of stock split, it's expressed in terms of ratios rather than percentage. And normally, it's uh, in higher percentages. So, uh, 3 to 1 stock split would mean that any individual holding one share would receive two additional share. So 3 to 1 means that uh, a shareholder having previously ha having one share would now have three shares. So additional shares would be two. Do not confuse this that uh, uh, three, 3 for 1 doesn't mean that any shareholder holding one share would get three additional shares but rather now its total number of shares outstanding would be 3. So coming to the same example, if um, uh, the corporation issued 2 to 1 split, that means that uh, any sh person having 1 share would now have 2 shares and this 10,000 share would be converted into 20,000 share because number of shares would double. Uh, that's what 2 to 1 means. Before this stock split, the company's balance sheet looked like this. This is before the balance sheet. Uh, before the stock split is essentially the same as uh, in previous example. But uh, we what we want to do is we want to compare uh, what would happen, what would be the accounting treatment in ca case of stock dividend and what would be the accounting treatment in case of uh, stock split. In case of stock dividend, we saw the accounting treatment in the previous example, in the previous slide. And in case of stock split, what would happen is that rather than changing these values, we would uh, simply decrease the, uh, the par value. So now uh, previously the firm had 10,000 shares. Uh, there was a 2 to 1 split. So that means... Uh, it would uh, double the amount of shares outstanding. Now we would have 20,000 shares. And the share price previously was a $1 par value. If the number of shares are, are doubling, they are multiplying by 2, then the share price would, would divide by 2. So we would, left, we would be left with a $0.5 uh, dollar par value. And that would, that would not change the, the power value or the capital in excess of the power value. This is just an accounting treatment, right? It doesn't in fact uh, have an effect on the shareholder, whether it is a stock dividend or a stock split. The reasons for uh, stock dividend and stocks or stock split is that there is a trading range in the price, uh, right? For example, if uh, a share is being traded, at quite high price. For example, the share of Bata Corporation, it is uh, a leather and tenantry uh, corporation, it produces leather products. Its share price is currently at around 1500 rather than 1400. 
it is obviously quite above the average trading range right so if people want to buy the shares uh, in market there is a lot size what lot size is, means is that uh, shares cannot be bought uh, individually what means that when you withdraw certain amount from uh, atm it you can uh, withdraw it in the multiple of 500 rupees right you cannot withdraw 2 rupees or 10 rupees or 100 rupees per for that matter you would have to withdraw in the multiple of 500 rupees similarly if we are buying shares in the stock market we do have a lot size so we cannot buy a single share we would have to buy a whole lot so if we if an investor want to buy a butter corporation share then they would have to buy say for example 100 shares so that means that that investor would require a lot of amount to buy the shares because it, the value of the share is quite high. But if the corporation announces stock dividend or stock split, then its value would decrease, right? And then it would be uh, in the trading range. If a security is priced above highest trading rate, many investors do not have fund to buy the share lot. This is what we just discussed. Okay, so this brings us to the end of this lecture. Uh, in next lecture, we will try to solve some examples of stock split and stock dividend. And we will also explore the idea of a reverse split.